Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video we'll be looking at how we can host a PHP based website on a shared web hosting using three different methods which includes file transfer, integrated git clone and also SSH. So let's get this started. So for this particular video we'll be using a hosting service called as BigRock. They offer a wide variety of options when it comes to hosting domains and cloud services and right now as you can see here they offer a shared web hosting for just 79 rupees per month. Similarly, they also offer VPS hosting and Google Workspace as well. Apart from that, they also have a cloud-based hosting service as well. So if you are into cloud servers and all, you can go to that page and check out that as well. Apart from these services, they also offer other features like email and security and marketing services. So if you are into any of these things, then you can go to the page and check that out. So as of now, what I'm doing is I'm using a shared web hosting with the advanced plan. And fun fact, I previously bought the packet quit domain from this website and the integration of this particular domain to another hosting service was pretty seamless as well. So for this particular video, let's test out the hosting service that they are offering as well. So I'll be going with the shared web hosting and I'll be using a PHP based application and then deploy that into this particular shared web hosting service. So I'll provide the link in the description down below. You can go there and check out their website. So for now, let's log into our account and see how we can deploy our PHP application onto their server. All right, so I've come to the dashboard and as you can see, I already have a hosting service with a multi-domain feature. So let me click on that. So I'll be using this multi-domain Linux hosting as my hosting base. If you want, you can go with a single domain hosting as well. But for my particular use, I used the multi-domain hosting. Apart from that, they also have the cloud hosting, cloud for business, reseller, and a lot of other options which you can swipe through and see what they offer. They also offer a website builder which you can use to create your websites on the fly as well and also it seems like WordPress is integrated directly here so you can directly create a WordPress website as well pretty easily. Okay so let's go back to our own hosting. Let's go to the multi-domain Linux hosting and here what I'll do is I'll log into my cPanel wherein we'll see the features that the cPanel offers and see the options that we can use to deploy our code. So let's click on manage web hosting and that's going to redirect us to the cPanel. Alright so this is the cPanel that they are offering right now. So these are a lot of features and you can go through these. But first thing what I'll do is I'll change the theme here from Paper Lantern to Jupiter. For me, it seems like Paper Lantern is kind of an old school one, whereas Jupiter seems to be a pretty modern theme. So let's go with that. All right. So, okay. First thing, they're offering few email services that you can use out of the box. I'm not going to touch any of that. So second one is the files option, which will be coming back to, which is one of the options that we can use to transfer our code. Below that, there's a databases section wherein we can create our own databases and manage that using phpMyAdmin. Apart from that, they also have a domain section wherein you can add your own custom domain and link that to this particular hosting. Apart from that, you also have your metric section wherein you can monitor all your visitors and also bandwidth that is coming to this particular server. Below that, you also have the security section wherein you have access to your SSH, which we'll be using further in the video. Apart from that, you also have an IP blocker, which you can use to whitelist or blacklist few IPs so that only you or few people can access that or all of the people can access that. So you can restrict that as well. Apart from that, you also have some basic softwares like WordPress, PHP per packages and a lot of other things. And you also have the Softaculous app installer. You can go there and install any application that you want as well. So from this, you can install Laravel, Cake PHP, or any PHP applications. Apart from that, you also have some other applications like WordPress and all. So you can open this link and browse through that. And right below that, you have the advanced tab section, wherein you have access to your terminal and also access to your cron jobs. So from here, you can create cron jobs, which will run on a timely basis. This is pretty useful when it comes to running background tasks without the interference of any human interaction. Apart from that, you also have your preferences section wherein you can change your password and security and some contact information as well. And below that, you have your app soft app installer widget kind of thing wherein you can install the application directly from this particular panel. Right. So let's go back. And now what we'll be doing is that we'll be looking at all the three options that we have to deploy our code. So the first thing that we can use is FTP, which stands for file transfer protocol. So what we'll be using is that we will be creating an FTP connection and using that FTP connection, we can directly transfer our code onto the server. And for that, we can use an FTP client like FileZilla. So for that, let's first create an FTP account. So under the file section, go to the FTP accounts and in here, add a login, then add a password. And below that, you have to specify the location of what that particular account can access. So for now what I'll do, I'll just remove this and I'll just keep the quota as unlimited and create an FTP account. So now the account has been created and you can configure the FTP client. 
So here, as you can see, you have something called configure FTP client. So let's click on that. And as you can see, the username, the server and the port number and everything has been given here. So what you can do is that you can use something called as FileZilla, which is a software to manage all your FTP clients and connections. Apart from this, you can also use other softwares which are being specified here, which is Core FTP and CyberDuck. But for our use case, FileZilla will also work. So as you can see here, I have the host, username and password and port number. These are the same details that are present here. I can just enter those here and click on quick connect and the right hand panel, I will have access to my server files and everything. And once I have access to that, what I can do is that on the left hand panel, I have access to my local system. So I can go to the location wherein I have the project, I can directly drag and drop that into my server and the files will be transferred. That is one way of doing this. But for now, what we'll be doing is that we'll not be using the FTP connection. Instead, we'll be using either of the two methods, which is git clone, which is directly integrated into this, or we'll be using the SSH connection. So let's look at that as well. And in here, if you scroll down a bit, you will see under the file section, we have something called git version control. So let's open that as well. And as you can see here, you can create or link a repository, which is already there in GitHub to this particular hosting. So what I'll be doing is that I'll go to my repositories and packet code. And as you can see here, we have a repository called as blog using PHP and MySQL. So this project was created as part of the two part video series that we had on our YouTube channel regarding creation of a blog using PHP and MySQL. So I'll link those videos in the cards above and in the description down below. You can go there and check that out if you want to see how we can create a blog using PHP and MySQL. So for our use case, I'll go to the code section and click on copy. Now it's going to copy the GitHub URL. So let's go back to the cPanel and in here, let's create a new repository. Let's give the clone URL. So what I'll do is that I'll remove this particular thing from here and I'll just type in public underscore HTML. So we already have a public underscore HTML folder inside of our server. And that is where we want to keep all of our files. If we want our website to be visible to everybody in the world. And if you want to know the exact spelling of this particular folder name, you can go back to your cPanel and you can open your file manager. And inside your file manager, if you expand this particular folder, this is where you have all your files, right? So this is the name of the folder wherein you have to deploy all your files. So I'll go back and I'll type that here. And once I have that, I'll just click on create. Okay, it seems like our public underscore HTML already has few files. So if you cannot clone into that particular folder once again. So what I'll do is that I'll go back and I'll open my file directory in here. Let's go to the public underscore HTML and in here, let's delete all these particular files, right? Once I have done that, I'll go back to my Git and I'll click on create. Let's refresh the page once again. Let's add the URL and let's type in public underscore HTML. Then let's type in the project name. As you can see here, the code has been deployed successfully onto this particular folder. And if you click on manage, you can see the branch and everything has been specified here. So if you have a different branch apart from master, you can specify that branch as well and redeploy or update that particular thing. And whenever you make any change into your Git repository, you can go to pull or deploy and pull that application from Git to this particular server and redeploy that onto this particular thing as well. So if I go to my file manager and if I click on the public HTML, you'll see that we have a new folder called as blog PHP hyphen MySQL. So if you open that, you will see that we have the create, edit and all the remaining files that we have inside our Git as well. So once this is done, the only remaining thing that we need to do is to create our database connection. So if you have seen the creation of this particular project, you'll know that we have our database connection in the logic.php file. So let me quickly open that. As you can see here, there's a file that we have. And at the top, we have the connection variable. And here I've given the host name, database name, username and password. So we need to change these to our own particular server's credentials. So for that, what I'll do is I'll go to my cPanel and I'll go to the databases section. And in here, let's click on MySQL databases. So what we have to do is that we have to create a new database. So let me give a new database name. Let's click on create database. All right, so the database has been created. Now what we can do is that we can add a user to this particular database. So let's click on create user and that has created a database as well as a user for this particular database. So now if I go back to the cPanel and if I click on PHP my admin, you'll see that we have a database called blog underscore PHP underscore MySQL. Inside of this, I can run my SQL queries and I can create my database tables and all. But before that, what we have to do is that we have to initialize this connection. So for that, we have to go back to our file manager 
And as you can see here, this is the location of where we have our credentials, right? So I'll leave the local host as the host name. I'll just change the remaining details. For that, what I'll do, I'll go back to the database page and copy my database name. Let's add that to the database name. And let's go back to the cPanel once again. Let's copy the username and password as well. Let's add that here. And let's also add the password. All right, so once that is done, I will save the changes. And now this particular file should have been updated and my connection should have been established. But if you want this particular website to work, what we have to do is that we have to initialize the database tables as well. So run your queries here and that should create all the tables. So now before closing this off, let's also see how we can transfer our files using the SSH connection as well. So for that, let's go back to the cPanel and let's scroll down and you'll see you have something called SSH access. So let's open that. And in here, what you can do is that you can create or manage all your SSH keys. So I'll click on manage SSH keys. And in here, what I'll do is that I'll create a new SSH key. So there are two ways in which I can do this. One is to create an SSH key here and use that and connect in my PuTTY or any other client. Or second way is that I can create a SSH key in my local system in my Windows and import that key into this particular server so that my system can access this particular server. So we'll go with the second approach and I will create an SSH key in my system and use that in this particular server. So for that, let's go back and let's open a new terminal instance. So I'll be using git bash as the git bash is a Linux based environment. So I'll expand this here. Right. So what I'll do is I'll type in SSH hyphen key gen. That's going to create a new public key and it's going to ask me where you want this particular key to be saved. I want this to be saved in the default location. I'll just click on enter and it's saying that there is a key already present in that. Do you want to overwrite that? For now, yes, I want to overwrite that. And as you can see, that key has been created and it's present in this particular location. Let's copy that. Okay, seems like that is not working. Let's manually do that. Okay, seems like the structure is a bit different here. So let's not do that. Instead, let's go to the file directory directly. And in here, you'll go to local disk, then users, then go to the users folder. And in here, we have the dot SSH folder. Let's open that and let's open the git bash here. Right, as you can see here, we have the id underscore rsa. That is what we want to use. So I'll get the id underscore rsa dot pub because we want the public key. So I'll just copy this particular content from here. Let's copy that. Let's go back to our hosting. Let's click on import key and in the public key location, let's add that here. Now let's click on import and that key should have been imported. All right. So once your key has been imported, what you have to do is that open the terminal once again, then type in SSH, give a space, then give the username of your particular account. And you can find that username in the dashboard of your cPanel on the right hand menu. So I'll copy and paste mine. Then give another rate and give the IP address. This will be the IP address given to your particular server. Since I'm using a shared web hosting service, I'll paste that here and then click on enter. And that's going to ask whether you want to connect to the server or not. And you can type in yes, and you'll be connected to your particular server directories. From there, you can use the git clone or whatever way you want to transfer your files onto that server. So that is how you transfer all your files onto your shared hosting and create the database connections and connect that into your code as well. So once again, if you're interested in BigRock, I'll link that in the description down below. You can go there and try it out on your own as well. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you have liked what you've seen till now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.